pilgrimage has had a resurgence and it's more popular than ever in modern history. There have been pan-European programs to re-establish the Via Francigena and the Camino de Santiago. And here in the UK, we have our own internal routes to explore, some of which connect with the continental ones. Now, humankind has been going on pilgrimages for millennia in many religions. It satisfies our desires for travel, adventure, history, culture, architectural admiration, self-improvement. You could say it's actually the, the, the first self-help program. However, rarely is it examined through its uh, associated theology. And that's what we will be doing with the retired Archbishop of Canterbury, Rowan Williams, in this program. I'm Stephanie Key. I've been going on pilgrimages for decades across many continents. We'll be turning to St. Bede and his book, The Ecclesiastical History of the English-Speaking People, to better understand the spiritual history of the United Kingdom and the part that women played in it. Hello, Rowan. Stephanie, hello. Pleasure to meet you. Pleasure to meet you too. I really am flattered that you're joining us on this experience today. Very delighted. Oh, thank you. What is it that you want from uh, today's activities? I suppose the main thing I really hope for today is to convey something of the excitement and the enlargement of the pilgrimage experience and how that connects with the excitement and enlargement of particular kinds of Christian living, holy living, as you might say. So, should we go in and talk about it? I'd be delighted to. Thank you so much. <laughs> Rowan, you know, most of us recognize you from um, William and Kate's royal wedding, where you had an audience of, what was it, two billion, I believe? Something like that. Yes. Yes. <laughs> no pressure, is there? Yes, no, exactly. The details of the life of St. Ethelreda, her family background details of her later life and miracles and at the very beginning with this wonderful illuminated capital this is the prologue for the history of the Isle of Ely and this lovely little picture of the king giving a grant of land to the bishop challenges in life. I mean, let's face it, for me, pilgrimage is so important because it's that time where we can, uh, you know, dump all of our baggage and, mm -hmm. and, and readjust mm -hmm. and um, uh, it, it really is a self-improvement uh, kind of process. Well, it's, it's a moment of renewal, isn't it? I think that's, that's how people see it. It's very noticeable in Bede's great history that the role of women is underlined again and again and again powerful and independent women, women who decide to form communities, monastic communities, and who clearly play a very significant role in ecclesiastical politics and other sorts of politics. The great example being St. Hilda, but Whitby, but there are many others, and Mead is quite interested in these women's communities, and writes about more than one of them. Uh, so Bede tells us that it's, it's an area actually of 600 hides. Do you know what a hide is? couldn't offhand <laughs> the definition, I'm afraid. I was hoping you would. I thought you'd be my go-to person <laughs> on a hide. <laughs> Ely has the largest collection of remaining monastic buildings from the Middle Ages, spanning from the 12th to 14th centuries. The purpose of the buildings was to support the monastic community, but also to support the community at large. This was your infirmary. This was the food program and almsgiving program for the poor. It was also your education centre and your music centre. Clearly a place like this, or indeed Canterbury or Walsing or Glastonbury, they, they would all have been popular because they were places where people felt confident they would find healing, they'd find some of that homecoming we were talking about um, for mind and spirit. A lot of people, of course, have said that in the last few decades, more Christians have been killed for their faith worldwide than perhaps in the entire history of Christianity. And that meant that wherever I travelled in the Anglican Communion when I was Archbishop, I was quite likely to be coming across communities that had experienced persecution at first hand. I hope you don't mind me coming to have a chat again. <laughs> How 
do, how do you feel? I mean, there's always the way that we anticipate and prepare for a pilgrimage, but then we come to the shrine. It, it, it can be very different from, from what we, we thought. Yes, there's a well-known line in T.S. Eliot's Little Gidding about this. What you thought you came for is only a, a shell, a husk of meaning. So what you bring, in a sense, has to be gently put aside, whereas what you're given is not what you've ordered. It's not like a restaurant. You don't <laughs> get the dish presented to you.